Hey guys, welcome back to another episode right here from Stacy. Here We Grow Again. Today I want to just show you the update on my seeds that were pre-soaking. We did a nice video the other day on how I pre-soak and germinate my seeds really fast so you have plants within 24 hours to 36 hours. We have actually, these little beans were not sprouted yesterday, right? When we did that video, go check it out. These are sprouted now, look at that, and they're beautiful. They're not rotting, this is not mushy, this bean. These are Bush Blue Lake, um, the tender green improved or white. Any bean that's usually brown is not good to pre-soak this long. These have been in here, it's 24 hours now. Only 24 hours after being here, they are popping. Now you wanna transplant at this point because they'll start rotting. But you can see we're not rotting yet. We have a nice set root system on there and we're gonna plant those outside just so we get some beans a little faster. You know, you're getting beans within three days popping out of that soil, which I'll take you out there. We transplanted, I mean not transplanted, we planted these little seeds up, these sunflower seeds, up the other day in that soil outside. Well, guess what? They're already all starting to pop out and we're gonna show you. So I left these in here another day to show you. These were popped yesterday. Oop, but I left them in here another day so I can show you they start to rot after a few days. You can see that's root that's starting to turn brown. You don't want that. You want a nice white root like that little guy. Look at that morning glory seed. So any seed with hard shell is really good to do this way. Now these little guys, they're just starting to pop. We have a little opening on this one, so I'm going to plant that. might take a little longer than these to sprout, but that's fine. This one's starting to turn black a little bit, and some seeds don't germinate. It's just the way of the game. So you just uh, disregard those in a few days if they don't. And anything that gets slimy, you do not want to, to use, because that's going to be a really nasty plant. And these dark-colored beans do not try to germinate this long. After like five hours or ten hours you can of soaking it in this little paper towel, you want to wring the paper towel out. You don't want it too, too wet, sopping wet, to where you got water draining out of there like crazy, but you want to spritz it with your water bottle. Make sure this stays, you know, pretty, pretty moist, this towel, through the whole germination process. And I had these in the sunlight on my little table. You can see we got beautiful seeds. These are um, cantaloupe that haven't popped yet. Sometimes that happens with cantaloupe. And this little bean didn't pop yet. So we'll leave these in here for a little while. See if this rotted one pops out. And we'll plant these guys up in our tote outside. I want to plant some sunflowers, some morning glories. We ripped out some things in the garden. And we'll go and plant these beans. I want to show you how to direct sow them in the ground. All right, you guys, so we're outside where our radish tote was. We had beans growing up on the fence there, and we had um, beans on the other side during the uh, fall, winter. We got lettuce over there, kale, which is starting to grow, and these little seeds you want to be so careful with that you don't break the roots because it's really going to stall this plant out, and then you're not going to have a nice plant. These morning glories, we got this tote ready yesterday. I pulled all the radishes that were done out of here. And I'm going to plant these morning glories pretty close to the fence line because they are going to trail. This this morning glory variety is trailing. And you only want to bury the ones that sprout that much with the seed part down. And I'm going to put some sunflowers in here as well, maybe in the front here. So just make your little hole. Put that little guy down in there as much as you can without damaging him, cover it. And then you're gonna water your soil all the way through after you're done planting these little guys. Make sure that, you know, this little root that's right there that I just broke, see what I mean? Sometimes they break and I'm one-handed, but that's fine. I'm gonna see if this roots anyway for us. And if it doesn't, I'll just plant another one. I have more and we'll plant these little guys. Put them beans off to the side so we don't damage them. This is a nice sunflower. You can see that roots right there on the bottom. You just want to make your hole, put it in there really gently with that seed, you know, that root part down, cover it. You can either move your soil over or add some more. I just move it over because you're not burying it too much and then that's it make sure you water this tote all the way through now you're gonna have to make sure these seeds don't move around on you so just spray your tote all the way through with a sprayer or just a mist on the hose first and then you can go in with your watering can and just jiggle some water in there soak it through and keep it wet and this is the result you're gonna have these nice nice 
sunflower seeds or whatever you're growing, cucumbers, squash. I've done this with lettuce. I've done it with coleus, which is really tiny. And look, we got leaf growth coming out of the middle already. Because once this little seed pops out of the soil, sometimes we get a seed stuck, like this one was stuck the other day. Well, I gently pulled that seed off. Now, somebody, a, a subscriber of mine made a comment. You don't want to pull that seed off and, and force it off. You can squeeze it gently. You don't want to squeeze the plant inside because if you damage this little guy, that's going to be no good. And if you end up pulling that, that seed off too early, then it's really going to stunt this plant out. So I appreciate you pointing that out to me. I think it was, might have been Andrew that pointed that out to me. So I really appreciate that because I really like to help you guys in the best way possible and I uh, like to know when I miss something but I noticed that they become beastie plants we're gonna get this little guy to pop out soon but you can see we got you know uh, four seeds starting already in here which is pretty cool to see just after 24 hours we're gonna sow these beans over there in my other garden so I'll take you on over Okay, so this is my in-ground gar raised garden bed, you know, just garden bed. It's not really raised. I just kind of tilled it out, weeded it, tilled it up really good. I have videos on how I got this ready and the before and afters on those videos. So you can check those out. But it's just a really low budget way to make a garden bed. You can see everything grows really nice. There's no weeds in there. And we're doing good. I did a lot of work down here. I want to show you really quick. Because we are planting some beans. And beans really don't do good by carrots and stuff. Since this part was getting so infested with bugs because of all these weeds. If you go back in my videos, you will see just how many weeds we had over here. And it was infesting my foliage. That is what happens on plants when you have weeds and disease all around. So we have fixed these tomatoes by all these weeds we've pulled. Look at all that. This whole patch was like this over here. That is terrible to have around your plants. We have nice flowers growing on our tomato. We have nice plants. I mean, fruit growing on the tomatoes, you can see. We have a lot that are starting to pollinate on here and grow. So we want to make sure we keep her nice and clean, nice and defoliated with any bad foliage. You can see that is fungus on plants. If you're getting that, brown spots with halos of yellow around it, that is a sign of fungus. So I'm going to have to treat her like crazy. So these tomatoes, we don't waste them. And you can see we have nice healthy blooms now. They were starting to die. They were brown. And if you're getting that brown bloom on them, you want to make sure you treat with neem. Spray with magnesium, uh, Epsom salt. That's what I use, and I love it. And beans don't really like to be near carrots and stuff, so I'm going to put them over here by my tomatoes only because, you know, this part of the garden doesn't do too well because you can see how many weeds we have over here. I don't really control this part of the garden as much as I do over there by my other stuff in all them containers. So you can see that difference with, you know, planting them in, in the right area, making sure that area is clean because it makes your growing a lot better. Make sure that roots down. Just plant them in there. You want to make sure the soil is tilled up a little bit and break that soil up because you don't want hard to hard soil for these roots to push out in because then it's going to be really hard for these to sprout and just, you know, grow. We'll come back, water that in a few minutes, but I hope this video helps you guys in the best way possible to plant whatever it is you want to plant. We'll come back and look at these pretty snapdragons we put in the ground a few months ago. They are starting to grow and they're going to be blooming like crazy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great day. And I'll see you next time.